All right, we're going to go ahead and jump to the next section here, section 2.3. And this section is all about solving equations using addition. Solving equations using addition. Now, I mean, before we can even talk about what does that mean, we need to talk about what it means to be an equation. And this is how I like to define an equation. An equation is a math sentence. So yeah, there is some grammar here. An equation is a math sentence with the equal sign acting as the verb. Now, just like with any sentence that we come across, or most sentences, uh, sentences can be true or false. For example, if I say 4 plus 9 equals 13, we know that this is a true statement, right? Yeah. 4 plus 9 is 13. Use your fingers if you need to. What if I said this, is, um, is 5 plus 4 the same as 5 times 4? Are these guys the same? No, no. no this is a false statement. Okay. What if I say this? If I say x plus 4 is equal to 11, is that true or false? You say it's false. Why do you say it's false, Karen? Isn't the x one? Isn't the x one? That's a great question. X is a what? A variable. X is a variable. And as we defined a variable, we said it's <coughs> any letter or symbol that represents an unknown value, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that x is one, then that doesn't make it unknown. And I think what you mean when you say that is a lot of times students will say that to me. X is not one, but it has a, a coefficient of one. But X is a variable, and X could be anything, right? So is X plus four equal to 11 true or false? Valerie says it's true. Is that, that means it's true? You sure about that? Well, he's saying it represents an unknown number, so it could represent like seven. It could represent seven. I'm not saying it does or it doesn't. What if I say, what if I know, because I've got the answer key right here, what if it says that x equals 10? If, if x is in place of 10, is that true or false? False. In this case, false. If it, right, and, and if x is, if x is standing in place of 7, is it true or false? Then it would be true, right? So as this stands right now, we don't know whether it is true or false. But Valerie looked at it and said, you know what? If x were equal to 7, then it would be true, right? And this is how we go about solving equations, not just looking at it and getting the answer. But we start with the assumption that what we have is true. And if what we have is a true statement, then there are mathematical properties that we can use to figure out what x should be. Now, sometimes they are as easy. If you look at some of the stuff that's in the book, some of these equations are easy enough that you can just look at it and say what the answer is. But you know I can't let you get away with that, right? I'm going to have to make you work for it. So with this guy right here, what we're saying is that if x equals 7, then x plus 4 equals 11 is a true statement. Yes? All right. So this leads us into our first property that we have, and it's called the addition property of equality. A quick question. Sure. Um, it wasn't true or false, so it makes no, it, it was. 
No, I was saying we don't know if it's true or false. Right, so it's not undefined, right? No, undefined, what we've seen so far with undefined is if you were dividing by zero. Oh. You know, like on the test, the question that said 18 divided by zero, and you wrote undefined, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. It makes me feel better. So let's talk about the addition property of equality. Now, for a few of these things, I'm going to do it a little bit differently than what you see in the book. Okay. So here's the addition property of equality. Now, I'm going to use some symbols. So I'm going to use other variables, placeholders here, so you see what the form looks like. If you have an equation, we're just going to say A equals B. Okay. This equation, if it's true, is equivalent to... A plus C equal to B plus C. Here's what this is saying. It says that if you have an equation, you can add the same thing on both sides of it, and it's not going to change the truthness of that statement. So if your equation was true to begin with, if you add the same amount on both sides, then the statement will still be true. And that's what we're talking about with it being equivalent. Now, something else that you guys may see a little bit better here is that I could subtract the same amount on both sides. You can add the same thing on both sides, or you could subtract the same thing on both sides. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you do the same thing, okay? So, Dennis, let me pick on you and Karen. Wait, is it Karen? Megan, Karen's not here today. All right. Yeah, I just called you out. Sorry, and we're recording. So, if I say that Dennis and Megan have the same amount of money, you guys are equal, right? If I give you five dollars, Dennis. I better give Megan five dollars so you can still be equal, right? right? Otherwise, it won't be equal and the truthness of the original statement is, is lost, right? Just like if I take seven dollars away from you and I take seven dollars away from you, Megan, you guys will still be equal, right? As long as I do the same thing to both of you, then you will still be equal. Are you with me? The, and, and you see this all the time. If you work in an environment and you know how much the other person gets paid, you, be, you started the job at the same time, you're doing the exact same job, you're getting paid the same. If somebody gets a raise, you're going, oh, I better be getting the same raise, right? Or you guys don't think about that. We, who talks about raises in this fragile economy, Mr. Craig? Sorry. Just trying to give hope to us. So go back and look at the equation we have here, x plus 4 is equal to 11. According to this addition property, as long as I do the same thing to both sides of this equation, it, it's, it's okay. Now, a long time ago we talked about additive inverses and the additive identity. Remember that? What is the additive inverse of positive 4? Basically what's its opposite? Negative 4, right? Because a positive 4 and negative 4 combine to give you what when you add them? What's a plus 4 minus 4? Zero. That's the additive identity. Remember that? If you don't, go back and watch the videos. They're on my YouTube channel that you're now on. So according to this addition property of equality, this allows me to take this original equation and I can subtract 4 on both sides. Notice that what I do on the left side of the equation, I do on the right side. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? What you do to one side, you do to the other side. Okay, this is what we're talking about. And of course, what happens when you have the plus 4 and the minus 4? What does all this give you? Zero. That's 0, so what do you have on the left side of the equation? You just have x, and then on the right side, you have 11 minus 4, which is just what? So. 
it's just 7. Now, Valerie at the very beginning said, you know, if x would just equal 7, we'd have no problems, right? And algebraically now, we see that, oh yeah, if x is equal to 7, then it works up because 7 plus 4 is 11, right? This is what we're going to be doing. We are going to be solving equations. We're going to talk about what it means to solve. Okay. Now this is probably not the way that some of you would do this. And this is really not the way that I typically solve this equation. If I have x plus 4 equal to 11, I usually don't subtract 4 on both sides like that. I usually do it more in a column format like this. If I subtract 4 underneath here, what's 4 minus 4? Zero. These guys give you 0. But what I did on one side of the equal sign, I have to do on the other side of the equal sign, right? So what is remaining on the left side? And what's on the right side? You still get 7.